Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video I'm going to discuss the two reward aircraft that, if you have the time and you put in the effort, are permanently available to you in the game. If you're a newer player of World of Warplanes, and as I aim my videos at that kind of audience, probably you are, you may not be aware that there are two reward aircraft that you can get in this game for free, at the expense of time and effort. And they are the XP-55 Ascender at Tier 6, an American fighter, and the Vampire at Tier 8, a British fighter. Are these aircraft worth having? Well, that's what the video is going to address. But certainly, as a newer player, you're probably on the hunt for credits all the time, and these aircraft have excellent earning potential. So, we're not looking at a Vampire here. You don't need to tell me that. That's because I'm on my North American American account and I don't have either the Ascend or the Vampire, but what I am going to do is show you how you can get these aircraft. And if you drop into specials and missions here, you'll see at the top there are personal missions for both the Vampire and the XP-55 Ascender. And the XP-55 Ascender is the one that's in progress at the moment, so let's take a quick look. And what it is, it's a chain of combat missions that you can complete. And if we just look at the first one, which is pretty trivial, earn at least 400 capture points for destroying ground targets in any number of battles. Quite an easy thing to do. And something to point out here straight away is that if you don't fancy doing this mission, you can actually complete it for tokens. So if you have tokens available, you can get rid of this mission. Well, you probably wouldn't get rid of this one. It's quite easy to do. But if you look at some of the later stages, and let's go to the last one for argument's sake, you'll see that it's earned the Marseille Medal achievement. Now, I'm not going to explain what a Marseille Medal is, but it can be quite difficult to get, and therefore it will cost you 35 tokens to clear. And you might want to do that if you're struggling to get the Marseille Medal, but what you should also be aware is you should be careful about what stages and what missions you clear with tokens. The Vampire works in exactly the same way. It has a chain of combat missions, and again you can clear, clear them if you want using tokens. And if we look at the last one, and this time you'll see that it's for a Gabreski Medal achievement. Now, most people would probably consider that to be quite a lot harder to get than a Marseille Medal, and it won't surprise you to see that the token cost, therefore, is considerably higher. Again, bear that in mind if you're thinking about clearing stages or missions with tokens. So I've swapped back to my EU account now, and we're looking at the XP55 Ascender, and I've put it into a stock configuration with an untrained pilot so we can see what it looks like raw, as it were. And we can see that uh, the maneuverability figure is quite high, it's 84, and this is an unimproved aircraft. This is a quite unusual for an American fighter. Lots of the American fighters fall into the high energy category, and turning is not so important because you're relying on speed and altitude performance to do your work. However, what it does have in common with most American fighters are machine guns. And what this means is that you're going to have the benefit of not overheating the guns very quickly, but because your DPS is relatively low, it will take you quite a while to kill aircraft. Now, in a turn fighter, that's a distinct disadvantage, and what it means is you'll have to be careful not to spend too long behind one particular aircraft, so long that something else can glue onto you and shoot you down. So let's take a quick look at the equipment and the consumable slots in the raw form. And we can see that we have one for the cockpit, you'd probably put a gun sight in there, one for the airframe, this is a turn fighter, ideal choice, lightweight airframe, and likewise for the engine, light, lightweight engine. Consumables, I would probably recommend that you put in a fire extinguisher. Uh, for the airframe, click to mount consumable, pneumatic control assist. This will aid you turn for 10 seconds um, uh, with greater maneuverability and that can be important especially if you come up for instance against another XP-55. And in the engine it's a choice but in a turn fighter probably the engine cooling I always select engine cooling I think 10 seconds of extra boost when you have a bit of boost available will help you chase down a heavy or another target and that could be important in flipping a sector. So Let's pop this into its specialised configuration, so when you've done all the work, you can see what you may have. And I'm going to put in now a highly trained pilot, and this will be from my Sabre. Just scroll up and find him. And that's the one. And now you can see 
Most of this equipment is at the l ultimate level. You can see the lightweight uh, airframe and the lightweight power unit. I've also put on some reinforcement. I like to do that um, with aircraft where I don't want to compromise the maneuverability. This doesn't affect maneuverability. Some of the other equipment does, and you need to keep an eye on that. And we can see that the maneuverability has jumped up to 108. That's very healthy indeed. And very quickly, if we look at the service slots, you can see the equipment that I've mounted. And also, I've added in the extra slot here the emergency control system. And what this makes this aircraft is a formidable opponent, provided you don't spend too long behind any particular aircraft trying to shoot it down. Spitfires will not outturn an aircraft in this configuration. And that is a surprise to most Spitfire pilots, and it will be a pleasure to you, I'm sure. You probably won't outturn some of the more highly specified Japanese aircraft. In that case, you can fly away. This aircraft has reasonable speed. In order to save a little bit of time, we're going to jump straight into the battle, so no strategy and tactics section on this occasion. But roughly, when I'm in a fighter on this particular map, Archipelago Reconnaissance by Fire, and I'm in a fighter, I will tend to try and take um, our nearest, our local airfield if you like, just to get those resources under the belt. That will give time for enemy ground attackers and the like to fly into the plant, and I will try and get to the plant and then start to help cap it or prevent the enemy from capping it. So here we go, we've gone to the airfield, we're looking for the first uh, air defence aircraft and we're going to start working it over. And I change targets because one comes closer. Now the Ascender's gun, guns have a range of 1,772 feet, but you don't really want to be shooting at the extreme range because a lot of the bullets will probably miss. And I'm pleased to say that uh, we managed to take the airfield very quickly. But we can already see that the enemy is beginning to make progress to get to the mining, um, taking the mining plant. And what I do is I engage my engine cooling. Now, for those of you who don't know what the engine cooling uh, consumable does, if you have some boost available, it will add 10 seconds on top of what you have available. Well, that's obviously going to help you speed up and get somewhere a lot quicker than if you don't have the engine clear cooling. I ignore the BF-109, having had a quick look at him. I notice the specialized boomerang and it's on a knife edge as to whether we're going to be able to get here in time. The enemy has invested in taking the plant first, that's also a valid ta tactical decision, uh, and if they get it and then keep it, they're in a good position to keep this uh, uh, win this battle. I get engaged by the boomerang, and we go into our turn fighting mode. Now the boomerang, this is specialised, and this is what turns out to be a decent player, and it's manoeuvrable, but it's not winning against the Ascender. He's probably got something below 100 maneuverability, but let's say it's 100, and as you can see, I'm able to knock him down. He gives up on the turn fight, tries to get a little bit of extra damage, and I knock him down. However, he's achieved his primary goal, and the enemy has the plant. And here we are taking uh, pot shots at the ground attack, and as you can see, I can't knock it down very quickly, and that puts you at risk from a, a tail gunner, or indeed being jumped by another aircraft, as just happened there. So I leave the air... Uh, ground attacker and I begin to work over the Spitfire that's jumped me and as you can see the Spitfire was nowhere near being able to uh, turn with me that was an unspecialized Spitfire specialized Spitfires probably going to have something in the region of 104 maneuverability and without putting um, tricky equipment on it um, it's not going to outturn this ascender now there is one Spitfire that you will have to watch out for and that's the Spitfire Mark 1A. If it happens to have Charles Donovan, the special pilot in it, that will outturn you. So I decide I've uh, done enough of trading head-to-head -head with that aircraft. I probably shouldn't have done it. I simply swing behind him and the P-40 goes down. And I'm really waiting for opportunities to try and get in at the plant but, and then I notice the boomerangs come to engage me again. So now you're going to see another demonstration of the turning capabilities. This is a good player, he knows what he's doing, he knows how to maximise his turns. He's doing a pretty good job of it, but he's not succeeding. And I get on him and start to hit him with the guns. And as you can see the roll rate of the Ascender is good enough to be able to turn, cope with the change of direction by the boomerang. Smart move, good try. I like this player, but 
The sad fact of the matter is he's in a tier 5 aircraft that just isn't competitive with the Ascender in this particular scenario. And down he goes. Now that all took place outside of the uh, mining plant sector unfortunately, but we have managed to get three sectors. And there's a target of opportunity. I didn't really expect to be able to blow up the ship, and I think I did. But I'm not going to be able to get anything else done. I ignore the, the, the armour targets, a complete waste of time shooting those with um, machine guns, although I think in a, a moment or two I do get frustrated and try it. What I could consider doing is taking out guns, but really I'm waiting for opportunities. And I have a quick go at the armour target here and I give up very quickly. I head towards the ship. Got a little bit more of an opportunity here. Although it's armoured, I can do a little bit of damage. Unfortunately, I happen to be in the right orientation to engage the enemy aircraft that comes in. And it turns out to be the Spitfire again. It's flown past me, attempted a turn, and got nowhere. And just a reminder, that was an unspecialized Spitfire, so that's probably round about the 85 to 90 mark in terms of maneuverability. I keep putting a few shells into the, the ship, more in forlorn hope and out of want, need of something to do, and then I engage the BF-109F. Now, the BF-109F can be made quite maneuverable, and I would guess from the looks of the way this player is flying, he is more built for maneuverability than speed, but it's never going to outturn an ascender. I take a look at the Grand Attacker, it is worth putting a few shells into him, I do, then I drop down on the one which I'm above, that's a better target, and we've managed to take the plant, probably as a result of the BF-109 being knocked down by me. Always try and get above your Grand Attackers for two reasons, they're less armoured on top, and you won't be bomb trapped. Now I spot the enemy boomerang in the base again, he's come for me a third time, and we have an, our third turn fight. Well, spoilers, it ends up the same way. Another nice move, this time instead of trying, trying a roll, he tries going up. The Ascender can handle that with ease as well. I head towards the Grand Attacker. I swing away and I choose to engage fighters and multi-rolls that are coming towards me. And this is the BF-109. He's decided to have another go at turn fighting with me. And then he decides to... Well, he looked like he was going to run. In fact, he didn't. He continued turning in a big sweeping turn. That's not helped him either. And down he goes again as well. And provided I can um, protect this plant from a bad start, we're in a winning position, potentially. The Grand Attacker manages to take out my wing, so I repair it. And I'm now quite low on health. I put some shells into the Grand Attacker and then I disengage and go and look for the fighter. And this turns out to be the Spitfire again, completely oblivious to what's going on around him and shooting at a ship. Well, I have been shooting at a ship, but I was waiting for something to do. He has got targets in the base and he's chosen to fly at the ship. And he executes a sweeping turn and presents himself as a perfect target for me. And down goes the Spitfire. I'm trying to replenish my get field repairs for my health here, so I decline to go immediately for the Grand Attacker. Now I'm up to 78, and I put a few more shells into the Grand Attacker. I keep an eye on what's behind me, and I disengage, and I head towards the fighter. Keep weaving, bobbing, and weaving. It's the BF-109F again wasn't convinced by the previous two occasions that I could really outturn him, so I, per I persuade him otherwise for a third time, and that's the Winged Legend. Now the two specialised aircraft coming into me, the first one of those, although you probably didn't notice it was the Heavy, so I don't bother to turn with him because that means the other one must be the Boomerang. And here we go for about four. And the Boomerang is giving it a good go. I'm on low health, so he knows that if he can get me down, the plant is likely to be flipped, but he just can't. He simply cannot let live with the turning ability of this aircraft. And now I can avoid the heavy and consider having a go. Got to watch out for the tail gunner here. And in fact, before I can do anything further, 
we have the victory. And it's not a particularly spectacular battle in terms of chevrons, just the two chevrons, a winged legend, and I'd already got the token for that earlier in the day, so I don't get a token here, 16,635 points. But I wanted to show you a fairly typical battle in an Ascender. So let's review the outcome of this battle. And here I'm not trying to show you what you might achieve with a first grade battle, but something that you might reasonably achieve with a decent battle, such as this one. So it's a two chevron battle, which is a grade four fighter. And that net, uh, grossed 161,718 credits or silver if you prefer. The premium account bonus there was 53,906, but you can see that even if you are a free to play player, you're going to pick up 107,812 credits there. The aircraft wasn't shot down and I used prepaid consumables, so there were no expenses, so that gross figure is indeed the net figure as well. 2,704 combat experience, again with a premium account bonus, 135 free experience, again with a bonus, and a winged legend, but as I'd already got one in a previous battle, there's no token for that. Looking at the personal score, we can see that many of the uh, class-specific missions are left incomplete, and that's largely because I concentrated on defending the mining plant rather than going and doing the things that fighter aircraft need to, to do in order to fill, fill these uh, more completely. That was 16,635 points. It's a decent game, nothing special. Two sectors captured, 13 aerial targets destroyed, 4,252 damage to aerial targets, 16 critical hits showing you that the critical hits from the machine guns are reasonably rare compared to, say, the cannons for other aircraft. 300 capture points received, and if we hover over that, we'll see that 200 of those were defending. No surprises there. I spent a lot of time defending the mining plant and 100 for attacking team score. We can see that was actually second position because of the chevron count, but in terms of personal points, it was first. For the enemy side, very good contribution for the K from the KI-102 Heavy. However, one wonders whether he might have spent more of his time at the plant trying to take it off us instead of letting us keep it for as long as we did. The boomerang had a comparatively poor game. I suspect he's actually quite a good player, but he insisted on engaging me and lost each time. So now I've switched my EU account and now we are looking at the Vampire. And what we're looking at is it in its stock configuration. Now I have specialized this aircraft, but for this view, I've moved back to the stock configuration, which you can do by going to upgrades and then selecting between either stock or specialist as you prefer. And the reason I've done that is because I want you to see how the aircraft looks at its very worst. That is with a completely untrained pilot and no equipment or consumables. And you can see that the airspeed is 67, the maneuverability is 66, and the altitude performance is 44, and so on. Just looking down here, pause the video if you want a quick look at those. I'm not going to expand them. This isn't a review of the vampire. This is just a suggestion as to whether you should get it or not. So we now go and look at it in the specialist configuration and remove the pilot and put in a better one. So probably my Spitfire 14 pilot will do. That one there. Now, if you pause the video earlier, you'll see that the airspeed has now gone up considerably to 78, I think it was 66 before, the maneuverability 84 from I think 67 or thereabouts previously, and even the altitude performance has increased. And this makes the uh, aircraft quite a formidable challenge. When you add in the fact that um, the guns are excellent, we we'll look at the uprigs again, and they are cowling mounted weapons, and they're the familiar British 20mm Hispanos, and they deal 115 damage per second each. So if we just drop the gun armament over here, the cumulative damage is 460. That's a healthy DPS, and you will be able to certainly knock down enemy fighters very quickly if you get them within range, and the range is pretty good, about 2400 feet. And indeed, you'll be able to knock down the heavies and, and even bombers, provided you're a bit careful about the tail gunners. This makes this aircraft a splendid uh, addition to your hangar, and you can get it for free. And the credit earning potential is excellent, as you'll see late, later in the video. Again, I'm going to emphasize, if you're playing at around tiers one to four, it's too early to consider getting the, the Vampire, in my opinion. You will struggle at tier eight, especially if the, as you will have to, in the first place, fly the aircraft stock. But if you're at tier six or seven or even eight, now's the time to look to get this little beauty. So this is the plateau map. It's the Weapon of Revenge variant. It has a central military base, two flanking air, air, repair air bases, and two flanking garrisons. Now, the World of Warplanes team advised you that uh, 
the military base should only be attacked with any class of aircraft other than a fighter, well, you can't always believe what they say. This aircraft is more than suitable for attacking the military base. It has the altitude performance, it has the speed, and that sector is the most important, both strategically and tactically, on the map. So off we go. So up the first heavy fighter. The angle means that I don't do a great deal of damage to him. I'll look to see what's above me. And the VB-10 comes within range. Now the VB-10 is a tier 7 heavy, and perhaps it's not the most heavily built of, uh, of the heavies, but you can see that these four 20mm Hispanos made very short work of him. And the military base falls to us quickly. And because I've got such good guns, I'm not even afraid of taking on a bot bomber. I might think twice if it were a human, of course, but a bot presents not a, a lot of difficulty. Drop out of the red altitudes. Begin to assess what else we need needs to be done. We're two sectors to one down, but we do have the advantage of the military base, and we want to keep this. I decide to select the ground attacker for my first attack. As you can see, half the health of the ground attacker disappears with these guns. And now I'm in a very favourable position to take out the, the F7F, the Tiger Cat, and away he goes. Again, that's a tier 7 heavy, but the guns make very short work of what is a heavy aircraft on the And they don't do too badly against the ground attacker, do they? Now something gets behind me here. Get a damaged wing, which I put back in straight away. I engage my pneumatic control assist, and probably I didn't have to. It's the VB-10 again, and I've got more than enough speed to keep up with this tier 7 heavy, and he soon falls to the guns. I flip round, I look for my next target. There's a ground attacker. I'm examining to see whether that's what I want to take or whether I want to take something else. Decline the high altitude bomber. I could possibly have gone for the lower altitude bomber there, but I decided to remove the ground attack instead. Quarter of the health gone. I need to hurry up. And down goes the ground attacker, which keeps the military base ours for a little bit longer. An SU 9 flies obligingly in front of my guns. I decide not to chase the RB 17. I think he's probably got a nasty rear gunner. And that's not a good thing to go against. I decide the ground attacker is the target of best opportunity. It's the R10M. I'm nowhere near the bomb trap, no concerns there. And basically, this is two passes to knock down a ground attacker with a fighter. Well managed guns. Vampire mean that you can do an awful lot of work against even aircraft with high HP balls. At this point, the Yak-3RD comes in. So does the Tiger Cat, so I choose to fly past them so I can get some distance and then come back and select if I've got an opportunity, the best target. And the Yak-3RD makes up my mind for me. It's only got a 27mm cannon. I'm not worried by that. I strip him down very quickly and down he goes. That's a tier 7 uh, Soviet uh, premium fighter, by the way. And the shooting at the Tiger Cat there wasn't of the best. So I just disengage, recompose myself, get most of his health, and then dispose of him. Now, unfortunately, because of the weight of aircraft that they had in the sector, the military base has actually fallen, so it's now down to me to try and retake it when I get the opportunity. First off, I've got to avoid the flak, and then I've got to avoid the enemy heavies trying to get me in a pincer movement. And then once I've avoided them, I can chase them down quite easily. Now, the flak has got a bead on me here. I very nearly get myself shot down. And now I'm in a bit of trouble. Nonetheless, I get out the enemy heavy, and defence aircraft heavy that is. I see the other one coming right at me, so I evade. Once I'm behind him, I should be able to deal with him. With a little bit of gun management, 
two volleys and he's gone as well. Start weaving because I don't want the flank to take the remainder of my health. That would be a, 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 more than a nuisance. I'll keep weaving and I decide that I've got to get out of the sector otherwise the AA guns will eventually land a shot on me. So I go to see if I, there's anything I can do at the airbase. Look at the enemy heavy. Another target presents itself. Managed to get him down. Swing round. But unfortunately, I lose my uh, plane to the Yak R3RD. So I've chosen to spawn at the southern airbase, and the first thing I find is that I'm right in front of a Tempest that sets me on fire. Thank you very much for the spawning mechanic there. I evade, get behind him very quickly, and dispose of him. In the meantime, my team has been able to take the military base, I don't have to worry about that, but I'm off to defend it. Keeping an eye out to the left to see what's incoming, whether it's going to threaten me. And I want to try and get the bomber out. And I decide that's a futile pursuit. And I look for another target of opportunity. Come back down into slightly better altitudes. And there we see the RB-17. Low health. Why don't I kill him? Why didn't I shoot at him? Why did I ignore, ignore him? Well, look at the score line. It's just coming to effect now. If I'd shot him down five seconds earlier, he would have respawned. I waited deliberately so that when I shot him down, he would be out of the game. And that's a big threat removed, and that gives us an opportunity to win this game. It turns out that the other bot bomber falls under my guns, and I remove that one as well. Now it's really just a question of taking out targets and making sure we keep this military base. If we do that, we should win this game. Once I start getting accurate, accurate shots on the P-47, he goes down very quickly. And the Wing Legend notification goes through. Strip down the IL-10M. Very nearly kill him in that pass. In fact, he blows, blows up through fire, and that gives me the hero of the sky badge. BB-10 comes into view again. Not my kill. Swing round. That Fokker Wolf 190A8, that's also a premium aircraft. Although that's a bot in this particular case, in this particular case and he falls under my guns as well. So now I'm seeking damage. I've decided to abandon the military base. It really doesn't matter whether we lose it or not anymore. And I can hunt down enemy aircraft and pick up extra damage. Get a bit close to this uh, multi-roll. So I recompose myself again, come back and finish him off. And that's the end of the battle. Nice haul of medals, 18,310 points. This is perhaps a bit of a better game than the Ascender, but it's not a spectacular game. So let's review the outcome of the battle. We can see it's a five chevron battle, otherwise known as a grade one fighter, the best result possible. Gross income of 355,387 credits or silver if you prefer. That's with the premium account bonus. As you can see, nearly 120,000 for that. If we look at the message box, we can see that the repair cost was 4,700 because the aircraft was shot down once. Prepaid consumables were in use, so no costs there. 12,268 uh, experience, and of course that's with bonuses. Not only the premium account, it was a times two first win of the day as well. 613 free experience with the premium account bonus, and a token for the first medal of the day for the Kosher Dub. If we look at the personal score, score tab, we can see that the class-specific missions, two of them complete, one not complete, still enough was done for the Grade 1 fight for all five chevrons. Personal points of 18,310, quite a nice game, nothing exceptional, but still quite nice. Three sectors captured, 19 aero targets destroyed, one short of the ace, unfortunately, 7,714 damage to aerial targets, and 30 criticals coming off the cannons. I was shot down once. And the capture points received 580, a split 400 for defending, 
and 180 for attacking. And pretty much the vampire is an excellent defender and is not really meant for attacking uh, unless you need the, uh, the sectors. Team score, unsurprisingly, that's enough for first place. We can see that the bomber put himself about a bit. And if we look on the enemy team, we can see that the Tiger Cat, which is a relatively weak aircraft, came out on top on the team, so that's a good effort. That completes our look at the XP-55 Ascender, the Tier 6 American Reward Fighter, and the Vampire, the Tier 8 British Reward Fighter. Both aircraft are excellent credit earners. Both aircraft allow you to train pilots, American and British respectively and they are permanently available to you through a chain of combat missions provided you have the time and you put in the effort to complete those. If you're playing at low tiers, say tiers 1 to 4 or maybe 5, I would recommend that you go for the Ascender but if you've already got experience at tiers 6 and 7, perhaps even 8, then I would go for the Vampire first. These planes are a real boon to free to play players because they will allow you to amass the credits you need to progress in the game without spending money. I hope you found something of interest in this video and if you did that you'll come back and see more of my content in the future. But until then, this is the Noble Q, also known as Royal Flying Corps, signing out.